thank you entire team of daycare con led by dr bansi sahu thank you madam for the kind word it's always a pleasure to come to ahmedabad now so when dr bansi asked me uh, in this oration what is going to uh, you know you would like to talk uh, i thought that i should talk on something which is uh, today's hot topic controversial debatable for past 60 years this pre diabetes treating pre diabetes with any particular drug or not were very controversial so i thought that why not present you know this controversial data in front of you and try to understand how metformin in pre diabetes is really important is it an opportunity or are we over treating our patients with diabetes so as a convention you all know if you have developed pre diabetes 50% of people will remain in pre diabetes only 1/4 25% will develop frank diabetes and 25% will come back to normal glycemia that's the story so 50% will remain pre diabetic 25% will reverse to normal glycemia so basically 75% people will not have anything only 1/4 will develop diabetes and diabetes and associated complications now the pre diabetes world is actually a very controversial world if you look at the who they don't say pre diabetes because if you say you have got a pre diabetes means diabetes is in front of your door aap ghar ke bahar baag khara hua hai aap ghar se nahi nikloge so you are putting someone in a contextual disease mode once you utter a word pre diabetes in one way it is good that you have cautioned the person that you are likely to develop di frank diabetes in coming future so therefore some people said that if you tell them pre diabetes you are making a psychological trauma to the patient oh my god what will happen to me etc etc so you are medicalizing a disease which is actually in 75% doesn't progress to frank, frank diabetes therefore the who has abandoned the term they never say pre diabetes they say intermediate hyperglycemia second important point that if you develop pre diabetes you don't develop diabetic nephropathy neuropathy and retinopathy the only risk is that you might develop cardiovascular disease in future or you might die because of the cardiovascular disease in future the only problem with pre diabetes is that you will develop diabetes that's it that's the only problem now once i have said that if you develop pre diabetes your chance of dying is higher you know then we cannot ignore it then we need to look back at it do i have some kind of disease where i am going to die whether i develop diabetes or not is different issue but i will die because i have got a pre diabetes where from this concept came this is one of the paper published in bmj there are many meta analysis published in the past look into right hand side this data suggests that if you have got a pre diabetes you look at those pre diabetes whether you have got a established heart disease along with pre diabetes then your chance of dying is very high but if you are pre diabetes but you don't have any other cardiovascular disease then not necessarily you are going to to die so even pre diabetes patients has to be risk stratified that if you have got a pre diabetes along with you have got a heart disease then your chance of dying is high so in this meta analysis a stratified on people all people with pre diabetes and people with that pre diabetes along with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease they were tend to develop cardiovascular disease more and they tend to develop tend to die more compared to those who didn't have pre diabetes and therefore we completely cannot ignore that live it pre diabetes and don't do anything you need to do something to reduce death in people with pre diabetes so that's the basic essential and premise of today's this oration 
Now, if you look at the indication of metformin in pre-diabetes, it's a busy slide, no need to read. On your left-hand side, you can see it was wrote by the same author in 2015 and 2021. Now, at the moment, across 66 countries, metformin has got a therapeutic indication in the pre-diabetes. But FDA do not recommend, do not license any drug for that matter for the treatment of pre-diabetes. Although you can see, this is the data from Merck Serono, original metformin maker. At the moment, they got the license in 66 country. But the big boss, FDA, it has not given you any level indication to treat pre-diabetes with metformin. So where from the entire story happens? What is the story behind? So I will take you through the entire story in next 15 minutes in a very easy way to understand. This is a landmark paper called United States DPP trial published in New England Journal of Medicine in 2002. This was a double blind randomized control trial and only double blind randomized control trial published till date with metformin in pre-diabetes. All other trials, including Indian DPP trial, is an open-level randomized control trial. So it's only double-blind, largest, longest trial conducted with metformin, along with placebo, along with lifestyle modification. You can see this is a 3,000 patients arm trial, randomized into one is to one is to one in three arm. You can see lifestyle modification, versus placebo, down you can see, and third arm was metformin, 850 milligram twice daily. Now when I'm saying lifestyle modification, please note that it is an intensive lifestyle modification. In DPP trial, the lifestyle modification was that you need to lose body weight by 7%. So if you're 100 kg, you have to lose by 93. And, not or, and you have to walk 150 minutes per week, which has to be a brisk walking. So this is when we are talking about lifestyle modification, don't be casual. Look at this, lose 7% of body weight. No drug at the moment available in India, even anti-obesity drug, make you a weight loss of 7%. That is such a hard intensive lifestyle modification. So what happens exactly in the DPP trial? Before I tell you the result, you need to understand some basic facts. Look at the baseline characteristic of the DPP trial. Because if you make a conclusion based on the only trial, which is DPP, you need to understand who were the people with prediabetes in the DPP trial. First of all, this trial involved 70% patients of prediabetes with female. No trial in the planet has got 70% patients with prediabetes. So be mindful when I'm saying it. Now, if you look at the Asian, you say, oh, India, we develop diabetes so fast. They represent many, almost nil. No Indians were involved in the US DPP trial. If you're looking at the Asian, they are Pacific Asians. And they included only 4% Asian population. So don't derive data in India from the US DPP trial. If you look at the family history of diabetes, people having a pre-diabetes in 70% of cases they had a family history of diabetes. Of course, if you have got a family with diabetes and now you have developed pre-diabetes, you're likely to develop diabetes. But if I have got a pre-diabetes, but none of my family member has got a pre-diabetes, I, I may perhaps never will develop diabetes. Why should I take any drug for that matter? Look at the BMI. Their BMI was 34. I can't see any one single doctor in this hall with a BMI of 34. So when you derive the data, please look at this background. They were morbidly obese by definition of Asia. 35 is the Western criteria. In India, we call it 30. They were morbidly obese with prediabetes, with a family history of diabetes. Now, so these are the basic idea of these patients with prediabetes. So what happens? If you look at this trial result, you can see there was a significant reduction in conversion from pre-diabetes to diabetes by 31% in the metformin arm, 850 milligram twice daily, 
and almost double, 58% in the lifestyle are. Look at the beauty of lifestyle. Losing weight by 7% and doing 30 minutes of walking five days in a week would allow you in 60% patient not to develop frank diabetes. And these are against placebo. But did anybody thought how many people in the lifestyle was superior compared to metformin? Almost twice. And if you look at the data, lifestyle modification reduced conversion of pre-diabetes to diabetes by 40% compared to metformin. So metformin is not the winner. Lifestyle modification is the winner. As simple as that. This should be the interpretation of DPP trial, which has been wrongly interpreted across the world for past two decades. So what, this, what did we learn? From the US DPP trial, we learned that to prevent one case of fr frank diabetes over three years, seven persons should have been on intensive lifestyle modification and 14 should be on a metformin treatment. So who is the winner? Lifestyle modification is the winner. Now, this DPP trial did not end at 2.8 years. It kept on going. It stopped at three years of time but they followed up, and this is called DPPOS, that Observational Study of a Randomized Control Trial. When we learn UK PDS follow-up, here it is a DPPS follow-up. It's called DPPOS. So from 2.8 was the randomized phase, as you can see, and it kept on following up until 22nd year last year. You can see, if you look at the diabetes progression, so if you look here, so let me point out here. So as we discussed, 58% with LSM, 31% with metformin. The moment you follow up these patients over next 20 years, these benefit, you start losing. You look from 31, you came to 18% at 10 years with metformin, 18% at 15 years, 18%, but with the metformin arm, it persisted at 18%. So still metformin was showing the ability to prevent conversion into frank diabetes. Even if you look at the lifestyle, the, you are losing the effect from 58% to 34 to 27 to 25. But at every point of time, lifestyle modification was superior to metformin. That, that should be the moral of that story. Since DPP trial was completed, people said, oh, when you are taking metformin, of course this drug would reduce your blood glucose and you are converting from pre-diabetes to normal glycemia because you are taking metformin. Why don't you do a wasot period? Stop the drug and then show me that really metformin works. So in the DPP trial follow-up, what they did, they stopped the metformin for two weeks. First of my question is why two weeks? Why only two weeks? Why not one month, three months, and then show me that diabetes has not come back or pre-diabetes has not come back? But for whatever reason, there was a two weeks washout period and people looked then, then what happened to IGT to frank diabetes conversion? Now look this data. If you look at the DPP data, so that 0.66, that is 0.34% reduction. One moment you stop the metformin, there was increase from normal glycemia to pre-diabetes back by 69%. This suggests that this is a direct effect of metformin in glucose control. This is not anything change in the basic mechanism of diabetes to frank diabetes, but simply it's a drug effect of reducing blood glucose from pre-diabetes to a normal glycemia range. However, because you know this is a uh, pharmaceutical company driven trial, there has to be something positive. So said, so said that, okay, after two weeks, then again we got the benefit. Now it was for 25%. But the moment is, look at the second point, moment you stopped, there was a 60% increase in the chances of going back to pre-diabetes from normal glycemia moment you stop it. So what did we learn? You continue with the metformin for entire life to prevent from pre-diabetes to diabetes. 
This is a 14-year follow-up study of, again, US DPP trial. What they was trying to look in this DPP trial, that if you really treat pre-diabetes with lifestyle modification or metformin, can you prevent future cardiovascular disease? So when they looked at the data of coronary artery, arterial calcium scoring in these people receiving lifestyle modification and, or metformin, they could show that the benefit was not greatly significant. Benefit happened in men, but not in women. There was a signal of benefit which was only seen in men, but not in women. So this data also showed that there was a signal of benefit in terms of reducing coronary artery score, but this was only limited to male gender. It did not happen in female gender. Finally, when they looked into cardiovascular events, so that is one of the surrogate marker, calcium artery scoring, coronary artery calcium measurement, CACS score. But when they looked into what happened to cardiovascular event, they did not find any benefit that if you treat pre-diabetes with either metformin or lifestyle, that intensive lifestyle, you reduce conversion from pre-diabetes to diabetes. But you are not able to reduce cardiovascular disease. What is the point of treating it? At the end of day, from the very first slide I show you, because pre-diabetes is not associated with microvascular disease, it is associated with cardiovascular disease, but by treating it by even lifestyle modification or metformin, we are not able to reduce cardiovascular disease. So what is the point of treating it? That is the entire moral of the story was not only to prevent diabetes progression, but to reduce cardiovascular event and death. But there wasn't any benefit in the cardiovascular disease progression in these people with pre-diabetes, either on intensive lifestyle or metformin. So that's the conclusion of this story. There was also controversy. When the US DPP trial came, people said metformin is such a cheaper drug do a cost-effective effective analysis. And this paper was published in Diabetes Care. There are five papers on cost-effective analysis. I am showing you the best one from them. They said, oh, metformin is such a cheaper drug. Go for it. Very cheap drug. And it was published way back at that point of time. This paper published one month back in Diabetes Obesity Metabolism. When they recalculated the formula, they said the entire story was wrong. Metformin is not at all a cost-effective drug for treating pre-diabetes. Look what is going on. 66 country approval for metformin in pre-diabetes. Right hand side data, the people recalculated that something went wrong when you calculated this cost effective analysis. So there is a huge controversy even in a cost effective. Now let me shift gear from US to India now. This is a trial called Indian DPP trial. Indian DPP trial led by Professor Ramchandra. Wonderful trial, but it is an open level trial. Unlike the previous trial which was a double blind randomized. Here there is a four arm trial. You can see randomized into one is to one is to one, but number of patients is one sixth less than the US DPP trial. Here you can see you have got a four arm. One arm is lifestyle modification, not intensive like US DPP. It was only 150 minutes of walk per day, per week. No 7% weight loss. The placebo was a standard advice, khana pina control ki je chaliye. And the metformin arm was only 250 milligram twice daily in the Indian DPP trial. Let me tell you the story. In Dr. Ramchandran's studies, the plan was to start from 250 twice daily and increase to 500 twice daily. But he has to return back because 45% people develop hypoglycemia in people with prediabetes. You would be surprised to know that moment you give 500 milligram twice daily, 45% of the patients develop hypoglycemia in Indian DPP trial. So Dr. Ramchandran has to revert back to the 250 milligram twice daily. That's one important story. Now what happened in this trial? Look at the background data and try to compare with what was there in the US DPP trial. In the in Indian DPP trial, unlike the US DPP trial, where there 70% were women, here only 30% is women. Look at the BMI. It was 34 there, it is 26 here. If you look at the HbA1c, it is 6.2. Moment is it 6.5, you are diabetes. So you are nearly into the field of diabetes from pre-diabetes, 6.2. It was 5.7 in the US DPP trial. But what happens in this trial? As you can see, four arm trial, three arm is superimposed with each other. The green one is the placebo, 
and you can see whether you do lifestyle, whether you take metformin or you take both combination of lifestyle and metformin, the chance of conversion from pre-diabetes to diabetes is ranging between 26 to 29 percent. There was no superiority of lifestyle with metformin over metformin or lifestyle with metformin over lifestyle modification. So that's the, the Indian DPP trial. And here, but there was no, surprisingly, and I asked Dr. Ramchandran, why did not you compare LSM versus metformin? That would have been the fun. The answer is by looking at the simple data, no difference. Because LSM is giving you 29% and metformin is giving you 26%. So of course LSM is numerically better than metformin. But they did not compare from the statistical point of view. This is a second Indian trial now led by Dr. Mo Mohan. It's called DCLIP trial. Again, this is an open level randomized control trial. Randomized one is to one. This is a three year follow up. Two arm intervention arm was lifestyle modification. But in DCLIP trial led by Dr. Mohan, this was similar to the US DPP trial that you have to lose body weight by 7% and not or you have to do exercise 150 minutes per week. And you have to take metformin 500 milligram twice daily. So it was a two arm trial. If you look at again the baseline characteristics, 40% female, almost similar like the Indian DPP trial here, 57% had family history of diabetes. If you look at the body weight, it is 75 kg and BMI of 28 to higher than the, the Indian DPP trial. If you look at the result in both metformin and lifestyle, intensive lifestyle modification arm, there was a 32% reduction to frank diabetes conversion from pre-diabetes. This is a fourth trial from China. And why I'm showing you, because that's the largest trial after US DPP, because it has 1,678 people. Again, open level randomized control trial, two arm, lifestyle, 150 minutes walk, and metformin 850 milligram twice daily. You look at the baseline again, here female. In their all international trial, the women represents the maximum. In Indian trial, perhaps the female do not want to come to get recruited in the trial. If you look at the result, and if you look at the baseline HV1C, it was 5.9 in the Chinese trial. There was 17% reduction from, to frank diabetes conversion from pre-diabetes. So if you look at the, all the trials put together with metformin in pre-diabetes, this is the paper currently in press we wrote. If you look at the data, so the blue one I have discussed with you, US DPP, Indian DPP, uh, DCLIP trial and this is Chinese trial. What is interesting to note that there was even a trial done with metformin prior to the US DPP in 1999 in China and it was a double blind randomized control trial. There was a 66% reduction uh, in pre-diabetes to diabetes conversion in prior to even uh, the US DPP trial. There is even a Pakistani trial you can see here from Pakistan and they also shown nearly in Pakistan 80% reduction in you know diabetes conversion from pre-diabetes always you know data from Pakistan goes haywire right so now if you go further down and why I'm interested when we looked into the meta-analysis done on these trials so once these are the RCT and you look at the meta-analysis done with the RCT you have got five systematic reviews and meta-analysis published till date and you can see here the one was from the Cochrane itself, the medicine one is from the Cochrane. And you can see overall there is 35 to 50 percent decreased risk of diabetes conversion when you are comparing metformin versus placebo. However, when you are comparing metformin to lifestyle, there is no difference. Unfortunately, when we looked into this trial, every line, all the trials has got a severe flaw. Basically, it is wrong. If I would have seen these trials published earlier, I would have withdrawn those papers by writing letter to editor because of the flaws in the trial. Unfortunately, these all are published trial and I have put it in the limitation. If you read limitation, you will say that throw into dustbin all these meta-analysis which was flawed. So what are the lessons we learned? Should we use metformin or not? What are the points in favor of metformin in pre-diabetes? First, if you level pre-diabetes as a disease or illness, because pre-diabetes has a higher, higher rates of both uh, somehow 
frequency of microvascular and of course macrovascular, then one should treat pre-diabetes to prevent cardiovascular disease. But by treating by any drugs, it did not lower anything. I have shown you USDPP 15 year data. So there is no longitudinal follow up data to show whether metformin can benefit macro or microvascular complications. The definition of pre-diabetes is self controversial. ADA ESD said that if your fasting blood glucose is between 100 to 125, you are pre-diabetes. WHO said that no definition should be 110 to 125. So what happens to people between 100 to 110? So definition of pre-diabetes varied across all the trials. Those who look 100 to 125, they had something. Those who took 110 to 125 has got something. People used to 50 milligram twice daily dose in the Indian DPP trial, and someone used 850 milligram twice daily. What should be the optimal dose? Exactly, we don't know. Theoretically, metformin because it is working on liver, it should reduce endogenous hepatic glucose reduction. So metformin should work in people who has got a IFG. But in all the trial, metformin worked better in people who has a IGT, not IFG. That's very paradoxical. So we exactly don't know what is happening. It is not related to metformin. It is happening because of the entire lifestyle metformin put together. Metformin is not doing only wonder. Secondly, if you look metformin, as I said, in Indian DPP trial, 45% developed hypoglycemia on 500 milligram twice daily, and uh, Dr. Ramchandran has to revert back to 250 milligram twice daily. The biggest problem in all this trial is, in some trials, they look for ITT analysis, and in some whole per protocol analysis. What is the difference? ITT means I have given you metformin, but you have stopped the drug. Still, I will include you in the study. In per protocol, those people who are only receiving metformin at the end of trial were studied. So some studied put the data of ITT analysis, some put per protocol analysis. That's the biggest problem. GI side effect of metformin is known to you. Long term use of metformin cause vitamin B12 deficiency known to you. And finally, by using metformin for such a longer period of time, we could not reduce, you know, ultimately cardiovascular event, although in men there was a reduction in uh, coronary artery calcification. So what's the way forward? Simple. There are three possibilities what we should do. We are not ignoring pre-diabetes, yet we are not very much interested to treat with drug. So what are the options? Option is, level pre-diabetes as a disease. So what are the pros and cons? Common sense. If I tell you that you develop disease, the pros is that you are careful. Okay, from tomorrow I am not going to take sweets, I am going to run, I am going to walk. So that's the one advantage. The disadvantage is that rapidly it will increase the world, diabetes world in the community. The people will start tending this leveling as a disease will have a not only psychological trauma but rush to the pharmacy to get some drugs to cure it and you will over-utilize anti-diabetic medications. So these are the pros and cons of leveling pre-diabetes as a disease in people. Second possibility is change the definition of diabetes and lower down the cutoff criteria of diabetes and pre-diabetes. Mix all. All pharma company in this world will be very happy. Uh, already 60% of Indians are diabetic. At that time, if you do it, everyone will be diabetic, including myself. So you can see the pros and cons. The cons are always more than pros. There is no pros basically, except that saying that you are going to develop frank diabetes in future, but nothing might happen to you. Third is, which is perhaps best is that risk is stratified. You have got a pre-diabetes, you your BMI is more than 35, you are female with a history of GDM, you are the candidate whether you should get something, do lifestyle if it doesn't work, add a drug like metformin, which is cheaper and, and we have used for past 60 years. So define these groups into low risk and high risk. Simply, doctors are my sugar I fasting. This should not happen. So you risk a stratify. So finally, we decided the consensus from A, B, and C that the intensive lifestyle modifications should be the key. There is no question about that. And if you want to really reduce it without drug, go for intensive. 
not 7%, it is not possible in our part. Think about even 3%. If you are 100 kg, 97 kg, you will have your diabetes. And actually, the earliest benefit of weight loss is happening from converting from pre-diabetes to diabetes. All other advantage of weight loss happens after 10%, 15%. But the first advantage of weight loss is that if your IGT, you will lose, you go back to normal glycemia. So the consensus is treat everyone with lifestyle, those with high risk, only these subgroups should be treated with, with metformin. What dose? Only God knows. We don't have data. Thank you very much for patience. <laughs>